Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a little bit of a different video for me. So as you guys know, if you do like follow my channel, um, I do kind of these like polish I wore this month videos at the end of each month, but like recently it's not been consistent at all. Like I've been doing ones that wrap up a bunch of months, but I usually do these videos where I wrap up and talk about all the polishes that I wore in the month and tell you my favorites at the end and then I insert videos um, or sorry I insert swatches of my nails and yeah that's been something that I started a long long time ago it's very popular now um, when I did it I didn't know much people doing it um, the only person that I knew doing it uh, that I watched was Lindsay does nails and she doesn't make those videos anymore but now it's like a very common thing on YouTube but since I've been into books, if you watched my book haul recently, um, I wanted to do that with the books that I read. So hopefully if you guys like to read books and you're going to enjoy these videos as well. So it's the same thing. I'm going to go through everything that I uh, read in the month and then tell you my favorites at the end. And if you guys do like books and you want to know what I'm currently reading and my like what I rate them and stuff like that just like how I post my swatches on Instagram and then I kind of review them I post um, I have an app called Goodreads and you can follow me or add me as a friend and see what I'm reading and stuff like that which is so fun and I've been really into it recently so yeah I'll put my Goodreads down below um, but anyways yeah so in the booktube community these are really really popular they're called like monthly wrap-ups um, just how like the nail polish community calls it monthly manis and I'm just really excited to start kind of integrating these type of videos into my channel um yeah so how have your guys' summers been mine has been so busy like so busy I feel like my whole summer has been trying to prepare for university um, which is really exciting like don't get me wrong like I'm super excited to start nursing it's something that I've always wanted to do and I've never second-guessed it like I've always just knew that I wanted to be a nurse and that's really really like I'm super grateful for that because I know a lot of people going into university don't know exactly what they want to do I even got my scrubs and like my um, stethoscope. I'm just so excited. Like I've already worn it. Like I already took pictures. I'm just really excited about everything. But it's been such a busy month. Like I've been doing so much for university. Um, kind of getting my whole bus schedule um, under control, and you know, like my bus passes. I'm doing a bunch of like online modules and quizzes and stuff like that before class starts. Going to orientations. Going to welcome week. Um, doing CPR, getting my health screening records, doing my police checks, also kind of fitting in every moment I can with my friends and family and my boyfriend because I know that once university starts, I'm not going to have much time. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys know this, but I'm going to McMaster, which is in Hamilton, um, which is pretty far for me since I live in the GTA, but like it takes kind of like an hour on the go bus, so it's not bad at all. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited, but I'm also really nervous. So if you have any tips on starting university and things like that, please let me know. I'm just nervous because of the workload and making friends and just like the whole atmosphere change because I'm not really good with change. I'm, a re I'm just a person of like habit and I just hate change, which is really bad because life is full of changes, but I just hate change. Like I'm so, I just like to do what I'm used to doing so this is gonna be exciting but yeah anyways um let me know how your guys summers have been I want to know I feel like ever since like grade 12 I've been really disconnected from my viewers and I just I don't talk to you guys as much so if you guys want to let me know how your summers have been what you've been reading what polishes you've been wearing I'm gonna be doing a polish I wear this month video right after this so yeah anyways let's get started with the books that I've been reading so the first book that I read was Tin Man by Sarah Winman and this is a book about two boys at the start of the novel um they're little boys they grow up with the same issues um and they just relate on another level and their relationships become more than a friendship and um they both have abusive fathers things like that but once they grow up, they kind of drift apart and they don't talk anymore. 
and then it kind of like fast forwards to the end of the novel and then you just kind of the whole book is trying to figure out what happened in between um this was a beautiful book like I teared up at the end and I'm not one to cry in movies or books or anything like that like I just I know it's a fake story so I don't usually cry but I I teared up like it was really heartbreaking but I did not understand the hype like it was a beautiful story Sarah Winman's language like the way she writes is so poetic and like beautiful like I've never read something like this before um so I ended up going to the thrift store and finding When God Was a Rabbit and I picked it up because just her writing alone makes me want to read her more but I don't understand what the whole hype of this was about like it was like people's favorite book ever favorite book of the year and I don't believe that it was like worth that much hype so the hype definitely ruined this one for me I think if I went in kind of not with a huge expectation of this blowing my mind in only 200 pages I would have enjoyed it more um, but nevertheless it was still a beautiful book I love 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 the um, kind of the French laps on the books like I love when books have this French lap and then this kind of like um, jagged edges it's just a beautiful cover one of the most gorgeous covers ever that I've ever seen and the sunflowers um, aren't just there for beauty they do have a meaning in the story and I really liked it but I gave it a three out of five stars because I was expecting so much more and but that's just me as a reader like I just like bigger books books that I could follow the characters for a long time and just really get invested and then I like books that have a lot more going on in them and a lot more of stuff for me to think about but I feel like this was just kind of like a sad beautiful story and that's it so go into that knowing it and you'll love it the next one I did not finish um, and I got to page 40 on it and this is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen um, I was really getting interested in the book and I was really liking it but I found it really difficult to read because of like Jane Austen was like a 1700s writer <laughs> like it's a really kind of old English novel and I was just having a little bit of trouble with it considering that I only really started getting into reading this year I just didn't I, I just didn't think it was the right time to read it so I think I'm gonna come back to it later it's not like a DNF like I'm not gonna stop reading this completely um, because I was really interested in the story it's about well, I feel like everyone knows what Pride and Prejudice is about if you read but it's about this couple with like five daughters and basically their main duty in life what they want to do is marry off these five daughters and one of the daughters Elizabeth is like kind of rebelling against that and she's just she's just not the typical like old um English kind of woman she is just interesting and there's just interesting characters and I'm just I really want to read it but I was having a little bit of trouble with it so I did not finish it um, I actually was planning on getting back to it, but the reason I didn't was I started The Girl on the Train and I never got back to this because I was so into this book. Uh, again, it has the French flaps and this kind of beautiful pages. I got this for $2 from a girl on um, Let Go, which is like a used web, like app for like used things that people sell around you. And guys, I loved this Book. This is about a girl named Rachel. She recently got, well not recently, but it seems like she recently um, got through a divorce and she rides the train every morning to work and on the street that she used to live on is another house um, and she watches the couple in the house every day. She's very envious of this couple. She becomes obsessed with their lives. She makes up names for this couple and she watches them through the train window every single day until she sees something happen and she can't get it out of her head it takes over her life she becomes a part of their life and then everyone's lives kind of intertwine and it was so much fun to read Paula Hawkins writing 
was very like simplistic but like it got you hooked like I could not stop reading this book um, after watching the book or reading the book I watched the movie with my brother because he really liked Gone Girl he doesn't read but he watches movies and the movie wasn't that great um, the books are always better than the movie because you just get to follow the character inside their head and it just becomes way more personal and way more like detailed and just in the movie everything happens so quickly and it's just like what like but I think even if I didn't read the book the movie wasn't that great like I just I don't know I don't know but anyways I really recommend reading the book over watching the movie my brother like I don't know I thought we were gonna like the movie because he liked Gone Girl and I thought this was kind of similar but Gone Girl, the movie, is a lot better than the movie on The Girl on the Train. I haven't read Gone Girl. I've only watched the movie, so I'm, I'm guessing the book is going to be really good. But anyways, The Girl on the Train, amazing book. I rated it 5 out of 5 stars. I never wanted, to, wanted it to end. I want to know what Rachel is doing in her life right now. I, I want to know about their life. So I loved that book. Then I wanted kind of after, like struggling reading Pride and Prejudice and then getting really like Girl on the Train and kind of following this mystery. I wanted to kind of read like this small um, cute book that I heard um, Russell from Ink and Paper Blog, one of my favorite uh, booktubers, talk about. It's like one of his favorite books I think um, and he was saying how it's a very underrated book but it's really really amazing you guys should read it and it's only like 90 pages um so i read this in a day but this is poppy and dingan by ben rice and this was heartbreaking like i just can't this was such a sad but also heartwarming story about a brother and sister and the brother narrates this story and his sister has these two imaginary friends which everyone in the town knows because it's a small town and then she really takes it seriously like she takes these friends seriously and people make fun of her but she feels like they are real and she talks about them like they're real and then her dad brings them to work one day and he comes back and he's like here's Poppy and Dingan but then she's like, no, they're not here. Like, you lost Pobby and Dingan. Where are they? And he's like, no, they're right here. And then the neighbors get into it, and no one can find Pobby and Dingan. And no one knows how because they're imaginary. So they don't know if they, like, no one knows how to know if they found them. But only she knows. And it was such a sad story. Like, I... I think there's different ways to interpret this story. I think I interpret it in a different way than maybe some people. Um, I think there's a reason that, you know, she thinks they're real. But anyways, I started to kind of, it started to click um, kind of like halfway through on what's happening. But I suggest you guys read this. It was such a fun, really heartwarming, heartbreaking read. And I just, I loved it. So that's Poppy and Dink and I rated it a 4 out of 5 stars because I just like bigger books that have more going on. Then I read The Storied Life of H.A. A. Fickery, which I also heard Russell from Ink and Paper Blog talk about. This is about a man. He is 40 years old, and he is a brown man that just lost his wife, and he owns a bookstore, and he is trying to get his life back together but his bookstore's not doing well and um his life's just not going that good but then he gets this like little present um and it gets left in his bookstore and it's a little girl and I feel like that's all you really need to know um going into this book because it's just fun to realize what's happening but I was really excited for this book but then once I started reading it I didn't like it that much I had in my head that this was about an old sweet man that you know is sad because his wife passed away but he is so grumpy not grumpy in an old man grumpy way he's 40 like my brother's 39 like my oldest brother's 39 like he's not that old 
but he's really negative and I did not like him in the beginning and I'm like I really don't want to read about his life like he's such a negative middle-aged man that I just want to punch in the face sometimes because like he hates like every type of book and he owns a bookstore and I was just like what the hell like I thought it was gonna be about like this little old cute white man like I don't know I had a different picture in my mind but so it took some time getting used to that he was 40 and he was of color like I, I had this different picture in my head but I ended up loving it um there was a lot of surprises in the book like it was just a more jam-packed than I thought it was gonna be there was a lot more to it and the ending made me cry almost cry like I, I never really bring out tears but it was heartbreaking at the end and I just thought it was so beautiful and Gabrielle Zevin just painted this amazing story like it was so much more than I thought it was gonna be and oh my god I just loved this book like I loved this book I gave it a five out of five stars Loved it way more than I thought it was. I was going to. I just, guys, this is such a perfect little book. The storied life of H.A. Fickery. Like, if you just wanna, if you just want like a book that's gonna hug your heart and just like, just like, make you feel so happy and make you kind of fall in love with reading. This is. I really recommend this book. Then I'm currently reading two books. I. <laughs> I planned on finishing them like before I filmed this video but that's not happening so the first one that I started reading I'm on page I'm almost halfway through I'm on page um, 115 um, is called shelter by Jung Eun and this is about a man like a middle-aged Asian man he's married to a white woman and they uh, live in a house like near his parents' house. He doesn't have the best relationship with his parents, and one and he's in a lot of like debt. He's in a lot of financial troubles. His family is, and one day uh, a realtor comes in because he wants to sell his house. Um, and they look out the window and they see a naked woman, and he realizes it's his mother, and basically it kind of starts off kind of like a thriller like what happened to the mother but it's not about a thriller like it's not a thriller it's about the the relationship he has with his family and so far it's sad to say but I've related so much to this book like the stuff he goes through even his thought processes like it's crazy it's a really real book and like it's just very real like I went through some of the stuff in this book I know a lot of people probably have and it's just a really real book I'm really enjoying it I love Jung Un's writing it's so simplistic like and it's just nice like I just I fly through this book like I don't know how I don't realize how fast I'm going through it. I really like it and I love the cover so um halfway through that and then I started reading um, Kiss of the Spider Woman I was, uh, by Manuel Puig. Um I wasn't planning on reading this this month but I was at um, this thrift store called the Salvation Army and um, I saw it for a dollar and I was like oh Russell loves this book let me pick it up and I was just really interested in it like so I just started reading it like even though I have a bunch of books to read I just started reading it and it's about these two men which I was confused I thought in the beginning was about a woman and a man but it's about these two men one of them is gay and then the other one I don't think is and I don't know I'm only like 55 pages in um and they're in jail and they're in jail and one of them the gay man Molina I think loves to talk about movies he's watched and they try to pass the time together and the first movie they talked about got me so hooked like I was like oh my god what's gonna happen to this panther woman it was like about a panther woman it was so interesting I'm really excited to see where this goes so anyways those are all the books that I've read and are currently reading going into September I really hope you enjoyed this video let me know if you guys do read what books that you've read this month and what are you currently reading? Anything about books. I want to talk about books with you guys because it's been my new obsession. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.